joining us here today and I'm thankful for the library for hosting. Um, it's exciting for me to be able to offer a nutrition class whether it's virtual or, or whatever <laughs> right now. So super excited. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and pull up a presentation. Um, let's see. Let me that really quick. And here it is. Okay, so hopefully you can all see the slideshow and you can still kind of see me over here as well. <laughs> um, so welcome to the Health um, by Chocolate class. It's really one of my personal favorites. Today we're going to learn why you, can, you no longer need to deprive yourself of chocolate, um, which is exciting. And today we'll also learn some history on our beloved chocolate as well as the many nutritional benefits that you can um, get from eating chocolate daily. And at the end, uh, usually I do this as part of a food demo. So we'll just kind of walk you through one of the recipes um, that you can um, try. You'll get in the handouts, you'll get a recipe handout, you'll get the PowerPoint slides if you want um, to have a copy of those and also a handout just, just on chocolate. So, before I get started, I have to read a very quick disclaimer um, that I do with all of my classes. Just saying that this class is not intending to diagnose or treat or mitigate any disease and that dietary supplements as well as foods can interact with medication. So just be aware and um, talk with your doctor so that you're informed of any possible interactions before you start any new food or supplement program. All right, so this class um, is brought to you by the library, but I work for Natural Grocers. Um, the one that I work at is the one on North Academy Boulevard, and my position is a nutritional health coach. I do have a bachelor's in nutritional science degree with dietetics training, and I feel pretty lucky to work for this company for um, many years. I'm going on about 19 years now, <laughs> kind of grown up with the company, I usually say. Uh, but I love working for Natural Grocers because they are dedicated to providing science-based nutrition education to our staff, our customers, as well as to the community. Before pre-COVID, we did offer, I did offer a class once a week in the store. Right now, um, I'm able to do one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching, and this is a free service. So if you are interested in just working on, you know, your diet or supplement, um, if you have supplement questions, um, it is free to set up a time with me to sit down for an hour and go through and talk about whatever uh, nutrition goals that you have. So the phone number at the store is 719-577-2500, uh, or you can stop in and, and say hello and, and talk with me as well. So Natural Grocers also is committed to quality. And so when it comes to health food stores, they are um, unique in that they pride themselves on really truly being a health food store. We have 100% organic produce. There's no mixing. Our standards in our meat, dairy, and egg department are very high. So we require that those companies that we're selling you meet our standards for humanely raised, for organic or grass-fed. Um, to make sure that you're getting a truly um, nutritional product that is also good for the environment. And we're pro uh, committed to providing um, everyday affordable pricing so that health can be um, available and affordable to everyone. And we do support our communities by uh, donations on, on various things, and we are committed to um, supporting the health of our employees as well. So that's enough about Nitro Brochures. Uh, I mentioned the handouts that you have already. Look out for an email if you want to look at them now. Um, if not, you can check them out after the class. So who else is in love with chocolate? <laughs> um, and I would have to say it is a love relationship with me for sure. Um, chocolate is a divine celestial drink. The sweat of the stars, the vital seed, divine nectar, the drink of the gods, panacea, and universal medicine. And that was a quote 
from um, Geronimo Pipernini. Um, he is from uh, was in the Spanish army as a surgeon in 1796. But chocolate was originally actually brought to America as a medicine um, before it became a confectionery um, or baking ingredient. Americans do love their chocolate, as you probably know. Uh, the average American eats approximately 12 pounds of chocolate a year. Um, and reports predict that global chocolate, um, the market will grow um, quite substantially as it does each year. A 71 million pounds of chocolate candy is sold every week before Easter. And then we have about 48 million pounds that are sold during Valentine's week and 90 million pounds the week before Halloween. So where did all this chocolate um, history even come from? Let's talk a little bit about where it all began. So there's kind of a fun history, I think, on the origins of chocolate. Um, chocolate was, as far as human consumption, began somewhere between 5,000 and 15,000 years ago, as far as archaeologists um, can tell. Um, the earliest evidence of cacao um, use was in a village, at, which is present day Honduras, where pottery evidence dates back to 2000 BCE even. And the first civilization that thought to have cultivated cacao beans was the Olmecs. Um, there's history of the use with Olmec, Mayan, and Aztec cultures. The Olmecs, they lived in an area of Mexico known as Veracruz and Tabasco. So the Mayans used cacao um, shamanistically and ritualistically. Um, Aztec cultures, uh, they used cacao and they caught, it was very prized for its medicinal as well as its um, stimulant value. The Mayan, when um, they used cacao, it, it, it was very different from the way we consume it today. It was more of a, a bitter, like a drink. Um, they would add spice to it. So it was very, it was cold. So cold, spicy, bitter drink called chocolatul is what they called it. Um, and the Aztecs also used kind of a similar um, um, formulation and they called it chocolatul as well. They believed that it had nourishing, fortifying, and even aphrodisiac qualities. An Aztec emperor Montezuma is said to have drank 50 um, servings or 50 cups a day of this um, chocolate tool drink. <laughs> um, and it was so prized in ancient Central America that rock cacao beans were used as currency. Um, the Montezuma II, um, he was the ninth emperor of the Aztecs. He was said to, uh, to be one of the most wealthy um, and powerful men in the world at that time. And he had, he was known as the chocolate king. He had a stash at the height of his power of nearly a billion cacao beans. So pretty impressive. <laughs> so unlike modern day hot chocolate though, they didn't add the Mayan and Aztecs, they didn't add sugar or milk to their, um, their drink. So that kind of brings us, um, the ancient word though, um, Cacao probably originated from that chocolate tool kind of um, drink. And um, it wasn't until chocolate was brought to the United States from Britain that they kind of called it cocoa instead of cacao. So that kind of brings us to the present of what people think of uh, with American chocolate is the Hershey bar uh, in 1888. Uh, Milton Snavely Hershey. He opened his first chocolate factory and where he developed the, the Hershey bar. Um, and nowadays, um, I think as we'll talk at the end, I think looking for healthy chocolate, you really have to um, search for it. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but let's talk about where chocolate comes from. The cacao tree um, is the tree that um, we can get the cacao um, plant, um, the fruit, as well as the, the, the beans. That's where we're getting the cocoa um, from. It is indigenous to Central and South America, and nearly all cacao 
trees grow nearly about um, 20 degrees or which is 600 miles north or south of the equator. So it needs a pretty warm climate. Um, maybe about um, 79 degrees Fahrenheit is the perfect sweet spot for, for weather. Uh, but they can, cacao trees can adapt to a larger range of tropical conditions too. Um, kind of interesting when you think about how um, the emperor had a, you know, a billion cacao beans. When uh, a tree, when they're um, the young trees, they bear fruit within three to five years. So you have to wait a bit for them to mature. And then a mature cacao tree can produce about 50 fruits. Within those fruits, there's about 20 to 50 seeds. Um, so the seeds of each fruit then can make enough um, cacao for three to four high quality chocolate bars from a seed. Um, cacao trees can actually live to be about 200 years old, uh, but they do produce marketable, marketable chocolate for only about 25 years. So chocolate really does have a lot of health benefits and it has been studied um, pretty widely to find out where these health benefits are coming from. Um, chocolate does have a, compo a compound um, that is a polyphenol. Within those polyphenols they're called flavonoids. And you can find these flavonoids, um, which usually they're pigments in plants um, that are responsible for the health benefits that you find in many fruits and medicinal plants, including um, plants like um, berries. And, but chocolate, actually, the flavonoid in chocolate um, is even higher the content um, than like green tea or apples, red wine, pomegranate juice, um, as well as like berries and blueberries. And we know all of those um, foods are like superfoods and they have a lot of nutrients as, as on their own. So not only does chocolate um, have a lot of these flavonoids, they it also um, shows we found that it can be beneficial to increase the absorption of chocolate when you have um, more good healthy gut bacteria. So there were some studies showing that people that had a better floor balance, like uh, that maybe took a probiotic or were eating a lot of fermented foods, um, they were better able to absorb these polyphenols from chocolate. So the polyphenols that are in cacao, they occur in higher concentrations, uh, really no uh, higher concentrations than any other food. So dark chocolate has about 10 times the antioxidant power of spinach um, when you me measure that by using the auric value. So auric is um, oxygen radical absorbent capacity. They use this auric value to kind of um, to rate different antioxidant type supplements. Before I talk about the health benefits of chocolate, I'll just kind of touch on some of maybe the cautions with chocolate. Um, there, there's a few for some people. So chocolate is can be a common allergen for some people. So th that's something to watch out for. Um, and again, it has a little bit of stimulant properties, a little bit of caffeine, which can lead for some people to nervousness and anxiety if they're very sensitive to caffeine. So, some people might be might want to avoid chocolate due to that. And then some people are more sensitive to certain vasoactive compounds in chocolate and it can cause headaches. And then maybe the other thing that could be problematic with chocolate is it's high in um, oxalates or oxalic acid. Oxalates naturally occur in a lot of fruits and vegetables, um, spinach, sweet potatoes, they're high. And just eating all those foods in moderation, there's really no issues. But some people that are more pr prone to kidney stones or maybe have a problem with clearing these oxalates um, could be more sensitive to chocolate. So that's something to watch out for. As well as chocolate is high in the amino acid arginine. Um, so uh, Arginine does promote the growth of viruses, like, um, for example, like the herpes virus. Someone that does have a chronic herpes infection would consider taking L-lysine. That's an amino acid that actually competes for the absorption with arginine. 
Um, so if you're if you know that you have um, a herpes or you have other type of viral issues going on, it's best not to eat too much chocolate because it is high in arginine. Okay, so those are the cautions. Now let's uh, now we got those out of the way. Let's talk about all the benefits to chocolate. Um, chocolate can be really beneficial for the brain, which is kind of cool. It's been found to support memory, help with attention and problem solving, as well as mental alertness. And mostly it is um, attributed to the caffeine uh, in chocolate, but also another compound in chocolate called Theobroma, th um, uh, Theobroma, which acts kind of like a stimulant, but it's not caffeine. Um, so about one ounce of dark chocolate contains 20 milligrams of caffeine. So it's not a ton, but there's a little bit in there. Like if you compare it to a cup of coffee, like eight ounces of coffee has anywhere from 60 to 120 milligrams. Or if you're on you know, Starbucks, may have more than that, but <laughs> this is your typical cup of coffee. So it's not super high, but it can give you a little lift for sure. And then um, for the skin, chocolate um, can be very beneficial since it has a high amount of the polyphenols that you find in green tea. You've heard of um, maybe green tea being good for the skin, um, but there was a small study conducted by German researchers and they found that a half a cup of flavonoid enhanced cocoa a day, so it was more concentrated, that equals to about three ounces of dark chocolate a day. Um, taken for three months, that made the skin of 24 women smoother and less damaged with exposure to ultraviolet light. So polyphenols do have an affinity for the skin and they can really help support the skin um, when we're exposed to um, the sun. Dark chocolate ranks above tea and wine and pomegranate juice on the list of 25 foods that are richest in polyphenols. Um, and that can really help with increasing blood flow to the skin as well as hydration of the skin. That's one of the things that can contribute to wrinkling is that the skin uh, loses its ability to hold on to hydration. And then, um, yes, um, chocolate can actually be supportive for healthy insulin response good chocolate we're talking about, or dark chocolate. <laughs> um, there was a small Italian study that showed uh, intriguing insulin response results uh, when, su when subjects consumed about 100 milligrams of dark chocolate containing 500 milligrams of the polyphenol compounds. And when you compare that to the control group that was using white chocolate, therefore no polyphenols and no uh, cacao content, um, it showed that they had improved insulin resistance and sensitivity in the group that was actually eating the, the full chocolate. Um, and that means that those people were better able to metabolize glucose. Excellent news for those with diabetes or any other insulin related condition. All right. And then what most of the research is on cardiovascular benefits of chocolate. There's a ton out there and, and it helps the cardiovascular system on um, many, many levels. Um, polyphenols, again, seems to kind of have an affinity for the cardiovascular system. A recent study showed that eating just one to three servings of chocolate per month was associated with a 12% lower risk of heart failure and when subjects ate chocolate uh, uh, one to two servings a week, their heart failure risk um, was lowered by 17%. Several studies have shown also that chocolate consumption can support HDL cholesterol levels. That's our good healthy cholesterol that we want to be higher. Um, and then chocolate, since it's a rich source of those flavonoid antioxidant, it can help prevent LDL cholesterol or bad cholesterol from oxidizing. We know it's not good to have a high LDL, but when it, the LDL becomes oxidized, it can be even more damaging and more inflammatory for the um, vascular system and cause more damage to the linings of the arteries. And then um, even the cocoa butter, so the, the healthy fat that comes from the cacao plant has some benefits for cholesterol. 
it contains um, small amounts of plant sterols. So plant sterols, um, sig a couple of those compounds are cytosterol as well as stigma sterol. These plant compounds chemically look like cholesterol in the body. So it kind of fools our body into thinking we have enough cholesterol, we don't need to make more so it, or absorb more. So it does um, help with reducing the absorption of dietary cholesterol when you're consuming more of these plant sterols. Um, we do carry, I mean, a lot of companies will use cocoa butter in their um, chocolate production, which is great and very tasty when you can find that. We sell um, an organic cocoa butter from uh, Navitas, and this is great for using to make your own chocolate. I've used it to, to melt down and just add cocoa powder and then my choice of sweetener, which sometimes will be... Um, like um, coconut sugar or stevia, and then you can add some nuts to it. So this is a, a way that you can make your own healthy chocolate and get the benefits from the cacao butter. All right, and then another kind of cool thing that the polyphenols do for the arterial health is that um, they actually help to stimulate the production of nitric oxide. If you're wanting to support healthy blood pressure, um, you may have heard of that. So nitric oxide is a compound in the body that helps to kind of dilate and relax and help with healthy blood flow within the blood vessels. It helps to maintain that elasticity and the flexibility within the blood vessels, which is important for heart, healthy um, heart function, blood flow, and healthy blood pressure. Nitric oxide, because it helps with just circulation and blood flow, is also good for the brain. It allows more oxygen and nutrients to get to the brain, and it can be beneficial for the immune system. So um, another great um, benefit for the heart. And then lastly, the polyphenols in chocolate do help to modulate inflammation in the body. And inflammation is an underlying factor in almost every condition, um, and especially heart um, issues. Inflammation, the ar arterial lining is what can start um, the atherosclerotic plaques to develop. So there was a study where moderate dark chocolate consumption was associated with a lower C-reactive protein, which is a marker for whole body inflammation. So that's something we can actually measure um, and, and show that chocolate can actually help. Uh, and then finally for the heart, chocolate is a natural source of the mineral magnesium. Uh, and magnesium is great for supporting the heart, helping with a normal heart rhythm and healthy blood pressure. Um, Maybe when, uh, I know a lot of women do crave chocolate around their cycle, maybe they're craving magnesium. <laughs> they need that magnesium from the chocolate as well. Maybe they're benefiting from that. So when we, um, let's see. When we ch choose chocolate and we wanna get all those health benefits from chocolate, it really does matter to choose a quality source. Um, so when I'm talking about these studies, they're using a chocolate that is at least 70% or greater percentage of cocoa or cacao. So you want to look for that on your label. I don't know how often um, you'll see that like at Walmart or other grocery stores, but most of our chocolate bars are like healthy chocolate bars and they do have that on the label. Like, for example, our Natural Grocers um, organic chocolate bars, which are super delicious. Uh, we have one that's extreme dark and it's 85% um, cocoa content or cacao. And then we've got one with sea salt and it's 72% cocoa. So that would be a good one. Um, we have some others. Alter Eco is a good one. It's 70, 85%. And this one's 70% from Divine Chocolate. And so also too, usually you'll find as this percentage is higher, they put in less sugar too, which is cool. Um, one or two others, the green and blacks. I've seen these as other stores that we carry these. And then Endangered Species is another good one. You'll find an 88%. That's probably the highest that I've seen. I may have seen a 95%. It gets really bitter as you start to go up. <laughs> so some people don't particularly like that bitterness. So if you kind of stay in that 75%, you'll still 
kind of have not quite as bitter, but still get those health benefits. So, but if you like the bitter, you can go on the way all the way up to that 88%. And um, most of these chocolate bars do not have a lot of added sugar, I said, and also they don't add milk. So you kind of want to stay from away from the milk chocolate. Most milk chocolates are 65% or less as far as cacao content. So you're reducing those health benefits as you're um, adding in more sugar and milk, of course. And then you wanna look for a product that eliminates artificial sugars, artificial flavors, and processed vegetable oils. Um, every year, my kids, I let them go trick-or-treating because it's fun, right? But then I'm like, look, going through the candy and looking at, I don't know, you know, Hershey bars and even like Reese's peanut butter cups, still um, you'll see like a TV, HQ is like a preservatives in there. It might say natural and artificial flavors. I'm like, why do you have to artificially flavor chocolate? I don't know. And you might also find things like hydrogenated oils in Reese's or, or some of the other brands um, that are commercially available. Hydrogenated oils are really not the best for you. They can create a lot of inflammation and have been linked with prediabetes. So um, as opposed to like a healthier chocolate bar, that maybe uses cocoa butter. Like this one has cocoa butter, vanilla, sunflower, lecithin. I know what all those things are. <laughs> you know, um, I can I can recognize these things. I know where they come from. Chocolate, liquor, cane sugar, cocoa butter, soy lecithin, and vanilla extract. I know what those things are. So if you can, if you can't figure out what an ingredient is, probably best to avoid it. <laughs> Okay, so unfortunately chocolate does have a dark side. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, and it, that's where it, it becomes more important to be aware of and look for certain standards on the label that helps to know that you are supporting um, a farmer that is not um, causing or contributing to this, this um, problem. So the dark side of chocolate is mostly in production. Um, so, environmentally when you know cacao trees are naturally growing they're part of the rainforest and so part of that whole ecosystem but farmers do um or they can where they just kind of plow down the whole area and just plant cacao trees so in that um that process we're destroying the ecosystem a lot of those plants that are naturally there to kind of help with checks and balances and support the whole environment of and the health of the trees has been wiped out. And so they end up having to use higher amounts of pesticides and herbicides because the trees are not as healthy. So ultimately it's not good for the environment, obviously. And if they, if the farmers are um, actually just working within the ecosystem, just supporting the growth of the trees that are already there or planting trees within the environment, it um, becomes a lot healthier of a situation. Uh, and then also there's some problems with um, human um, dignity too, when it comes to like child labor or forced and slave labor. In West Africa, about 70% of the world's chocolate supply comes from there, uh, or the cacao beans come from there. And there's um, reports of child and slave labor that have really plagued this region. According to research by Tulane Un University, from 2010, 1.8 million children from the age of 5 to 17 uh, were forced laborers on cocoa farms and um, all across the Ivory Coast and Ghana. And 40% of these children were not enrolled in school, as well as only about 5% were paid for their work. So what is a chocolate lover to do? <laughs> We do want to look for some symbols on our chocolate. This is one that is a great one to look for, the fair trade symbol. And I was grabbing, um, as I was grabbing bars, I did notice a lot of bars did have that symbol on there. Um, the fair trade symbol um, sets social standards and environmental standards too, which are great. And that protects prices paid to farmers. It protects against child labor and forced labor. It prohibits discrimination and that protects the rights and wages of workers. So fair trade is an alternative approach to conventional trade, and it's based on a partnership between producers and consumers. Fair trade offers 
producers a better deal, actually, and improve terms of trade. Uh, and that allows them the opportunity to improve their lives and their families and plan for their future. And that offers consumers also to a powerful way to um, reduce poverty through their everyday shopping, which is cool. Um, so you want to look for that fair trademark. I think a lot of these do have it on there. So the divine, it's down here at the bottom. The green and black, I see it down here at the bottom. Who else? Yeah, Alter Eco has a different symbol, but it does say fair trade certified on there. So there's some, um, some ways to look for that. There's another symbol that you may find on chocolate. I, I found more that had the fair trade than this Rainforest Alliance, but I did find some. Um, ours had it right on the back here. You see the little frog fair trade alliance on there. I thought that was cool on our chocolate bar. So this has more to do with maintaining the rainforest and keeping them um, standing for sure, um, which helps to curb climate change because when we have more vegetation and we have natural vegetation and we're not disrupting the ecosystem, we have a, the ability to sequester carbon within the soil. Um, so that helps with reducing um, greenhouse gases, plus there's less um, outside inputs they have to put in, right? Like I mentioned with having to spray a lot of herbicides and pesticides and using more um, technical equipment, we're also contributing then to, to greenhouse gases. So the Rainforest Alliance is a non-government organization uh, working to conserve biodiversity and it ensures a sustainable livelihood by transforming land practices. Some farmers feel like, you know, that's the only choice that they have. They just don't know another way. So this, this Rainforest Alliance actually helps with, um, they're based in New York City and they have offices throughout North and South America, Asia, Africa, and Europe. And they work in more than 100 countries um, by going in and helping to teach farmers uh, a better way and letting them know. Um, and, and in this way, it does actually alleviate poverty and that it's putting the power back into farmers and knowing that they don't have to use these pesticides and herbicides and things that actually end up um, reducing their yields in the long run. Um, so Rainforest Lies is great for supporting that innovative, sustainable alternatives to forest destruction. Um, and it can protect wildlife as well. So when we're not destroying the, the ecosystem, we're supporting the variety of animals and plants that can survive in these areas. And um, so there are rigorous standards that um, need to be met to, um, to have this Rainforest Alliance symbol on um, the label. And then also it supports transforming kind of business practices too. They work with big or small um, businesses to help them uh, in, implement sustainable and environmentally um, safe standards that um, do not destroy the environment or use unethical label, labor practices as well. So look for the little frog um, as well as the fair trade symbol. Let's see, I think there was, did I show you Chocolove? I think Chocolove, they've got the Rainforest Alliance. And then endangered species, they have a lot of information on their label, but I didn't actually see the little frog. They had fair, endangered species has fair trade, but I didn't see the Rainforest Alliance. All right, so if you um, are looking to support sustainable farming within your chocolate um, consumption, make sure you're looking for that fair trade or Rainforest Alliance certified. Um, on there. And if you don't see either one on your favorite chocolate, let those companies know. Call them and let them know that um, you won't be buying their products until they do look into making some changes um, in the way that their uh, co uh, cocoa production is, um, is going down. So uh, we do, we can vote with our dollar. And so um, companies that support and source cacao grown and harvested in a way that protects natural sources, as well as human dignity, tend to produce higher quality products as well. So um, that's another thing that's is great to note.
So there's some fun ways to sneak chocolate into your daily diet. Um, I'm always um, looking for new and fun ways to do that. Uh, you can just use a like a tablespoon of raw cocoa or cacao powder and add that to your smoothie or protein shake or lately I've been doing like smoothie bowls which is kind of like a thicker smoothie and then you eat it with a spoon and you can put some fun toppings on top. I uh, can even add some cacao nibs on top of your your smoothie bowl to make it more chocolatey. Um, cacao nibs are just the raw cocoa beans. They shouldn't have any sugar added. They're crunchy, um, kind of bitter, but they taste very uh, yummy like chocolate. And my nine-year-old daughter even will eat them on top of her yogurt, so they must not be too bitter <laughs> to scare away kiddos. So you can add them on your yogurt or add them to trail mix um, or like if you want to make like kind of nut butter like superfood balls you can actually put some inside uh this weekend i made some some paleo pancakes and i put some cacao nibs in with the paleo pancakes it was good kind of a nice crunch um or even for something more savory you can make a mexican mole sauce um and add some cocoa um in there or even adding some cocoa powder to red chili it does kind of go with a lot of those spices that you're using to make to make chili. All right, so chocolate lovers can definitely rejoice in the fact that a small amount of dark chocolate or cocoa daily really does have a place in a healthy diet. Well, next I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the um, the way to enjoy chocolate. I took a class from um, like a chocolatier, someone who like really, you know, knows her chocolate. She was actually would prescribe different types of chocolate for different things. And so she suggested to really fully enjoy your chocolate experience in this way by just selecting a square of chocolate and putting that piece in your mouth and just kind of letting it melt on your tongue and not let it touch your teeth. And then, um, Kind of just noticing the experience and what you feel from, from slowly eating your chocolate. I'm, I'm a big fan of um, the slow diet and really slowing down and tasting our foods in general. So I think rather than just wolfing down a chocolate bar, <laughs> really experience it and you, you'll end up eating less. Like then, you know, one that one square chocolate a day is really going to fulfill you and you'll notice those, those health benefits from it. Um, and chocolate can be mixed with a lot of kind of fun things. Like if you're making your own chocolate bars, you might decide to like mix in like lavender flowers or pomegranate seeds or dried cranberries. So you can really kind of even like bump up your polyphenol content by adding it to other things that um, ha can have benefits and taste delicious at the same time. So next, I'm just going to talk about a kind of fun recipe that you can make is only three ingredients and it's super yummy and um, healthier than the alternative. So Nutella, I know people love Nutella and it, it is good, but unfortunately if you look at the label Nutella, it's just like a ton of sugar and there's hydrogenated oils in there. So this is a way to make Nutella yourself and make it in a healthy way. Um, so first you would take, and this recipe is going to be on your good for you chocolate recipes. It's the, the paleo Nutella recipe. So you'll need a, two cups of hazelnuts. We sell hazelnuts in our bulk nut section, 12 ounces of dark chocolate, the 70% or higher, and then just two tablespoons of coconut manna or coconut butter. So we have a couple different brands, but it's like a, the thicker, um, it comes from coconut, but it has a lot of fiber and some of that fat, some are from that coconut meat, but it is, it allows kind of that thickness to a recipe. So to get the skins off of the, the hazelnuts, um, you can just toast them for a few minutes at, um, so put them out like on a cookie sheet and toast them at 350 for about 10 minutes. Um, and then when they come out, you can put a dish towel just over the top of that cookie sheet and let them steam for another five minutes under that dish towel. So then you just kind of take that dish towel and rub the nuts a little bit vigorously and that helps to remove the skins. 
you get as much as you can off of um, the nuts. And so once the, the skins are removed, then you would take the, the hazelnuts and put them in a food processor and blend those for about five to seven minutes until you get a hazelnut butter. And then once that is done, you wanna melt your dark chocolate. So you can melt it in a double boiler so that the chocolate doesn't burn, or you can make your own double boiler if you don't have one. So the quickest way to, to make a double bo boiler is take like a big pot and put some water in it and start it to boil and then take another kind of smaller pot that will fit inside of that bigger pot. And so you put the chocolate in the top in the double boiler or in your smaller pot and let it sit um, um, above the steaming water so that the steam from the water heats the chocolate and it melts. And that way you get the chocolate to melt without burning it. So once you've got the chocolate melted um, and it's sitting in that simmering water, so you boil the water and then kind of let it turn it down so it simmers. You're not actually putting a full boil on it. Then you can take the, the coconut manna or the coconut butter and put that in with the chocolate and let it melt. It doesn't take too long. Stir it up together and then you've got that combined and you can add it to the hazelnut butter. Blend that up and you've got your paleo Nutella which you can store in the refrigerator. Um, it's great just on its own. You can use it in recipes or have it with some fruit. So super simple, yummy recipe that replaces maybe an older unhealthy version of Nutella with a healthier version. On the recipe sheet, there's some other kind of fun recipes. There's a chocolate vinaigrette that's fun. I really like that. Um, balsamic olive oil, Dijon mustard, and then some cacao powder mixed in. Um, there's a recipe for a pomegranate coconut chocolate bar. I was mentioning how you could mix like um, chocolate. You melt it down in a double boil like you do with this recipe. And then right before, um, or actually put the pomegranate down on some parchment paper and then you just drizzle that chocolate over so it becomes more of like a bark. So you're not actually heating the pomegranate um, and then it comes into like a chocolate bark. Fun thing to have at Christmas time for a healthier Christmas treat. And then on the back, one of my favorite recipes on here is the dark chocolate avocado truffles. Super worth it. These are so delicious. They just melt in your mouth. Um, so if you don't have the recipe in front of you, I'll, I'll let, let you know the ingredients. It's a one avocado. Um, you do actually melt down some 70% um, or higher chocolate bar, coconut sugar, so just a little bit of that for sweetness, vanilla extract, and cocoa powder and a little salt. And you mix, melt those up and mix them in a food processor and you make little, little like balls. So they're like little um, dark chocolate truffles, uh, superfood truffle that's really to die for. So I hope you have fun trying some of these recipes or even just trying to work chocolate into your daily life. You usually don't have to force people to try chocolate. <laughs> um, if you want some other ideas for recipes, here's some good resources. Uh, the Paleo Indulgences, this book here by Tammy um, Credicott is a great one for healthier treats. Um, and they do have some good recipes for using um, chocolate and treats. And then I think the Practical Paleo, they've, they've, it's mostly like meal plans and good meals, but it does have some sec a section where they have some healthier um, desserts in there too. And then finally, I do always wanna kind of talk a little bit about supplements. I think today um, in the world we live in, even if we eat like the perfect diet, it's important to supplement with some you know, key nutrients to really maintain optimal health. Um, and in the case of chocolate, like maybe you can't eat chocolate for whatever reason. Maybe you have some of those issues that I talked about, like maybe you're sensitive to oxalates or um, caffeine or for whatever reason you can't consume chocolate. You can still get some of those benefits um, from chocolate by supplementing with things like green tea extract, which is high in the same type of polyphenols. Uh, resveratrol also contains a high amount of polyphenols. Resveratrol is uh, the um, extract that comes from red wine. 
that can be beneficial. It also helps with healthy blood flow and supports cardiovascular health, very similarly to chocolate. So that's another supplement you could try. And then maybe you remembered earlier on, I was talking a little bit about flora and the good bacteria in our gut. So probiotics are beneficial bacteria that can promote health in, the, in its host. So probiotic bacteria um, you can supplement with just to make sure you're boosting your, your flora. Um, and having enough of that good flora can actually help you absorb more polyphenols from your diet. So if you're having um, some digestive issues or you were just on a course of antibiotics, it's really important to replenish that flora and take a good probiotic. Or if you're just thinking, I may need a little bit of digestive support or absorb absorptive support, the probiotics might be a good idea. And those are some good friends. They're the natural factors. Ultimate probiotic is a good one. And then the Nature's Way, that 100 billion product, opt that optimal max potency is a really high potency. So that would usually be used after antibiotics or if you have um, any major digestive concerns. Okay, so that kind of concludes my fun talk on chocolate with you. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about the health benefits, how to incorporate it, and where it all came from. I can open it up for questions now if you have any on chocolate or anything else that I talked about. Feel free to, um, to put them into the chat panel or um, unmute yourself. If you know someone who you think might like watching this class, it was recorded today and should be available, I believe, as Melissa had said, on the um, library's website. Don, can you show the package where you said you can melt it down and add your own sweetener to make your own chocolate bars? Sure, yeah. Um, I'm, in the recipe I mentioned, you can use like coconut butter, but if you wanna use um, the cacao butter, this is gonna make it taste a lot more like a chocolate bar. Um, okay. So this is the cacao um, butter or the fat that comes from the cacao plant. And we do sell this. Okay, thank you. Great way to make your own chocolate. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we do carry the cacao beans, just the raw co uh, cacao beans, the little crunchy beans. Um, these are great, as well as we have a couple different brands of organic cocoa powder, but this is our natural grocer's bulk is probably the best price that we have. And it is organic um, as well. And if you're looking for like a healthier chocolate chip, because sometimes chocolate chips can have a lot of sugar in them, we do have a bittersweet chocolate chip that's in our bulk and it's organic as well. So there's some other options that are healthier for you when you're wanting to utilize chocolate. And I did email the handouts, but if you didn't receive them, feel free to reach out to me. My email is mmitchell, so M-M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L -L at ppld.org. And then if there's no other questions, then we'll let Don go and let you guys get back to the rest of your day. Thank you for the great presentation, Don. Thank you. You're welcome. It was All my right. pleasure.